Hello and welcome to Nobody Wake the Bugbear, Australia's biggest and perhaps only actual play podcast for the Mothership Sci-Fi Horror RPG, published by Tuesday Night Games. We're not just an actual play podcast, we are a premium audio experience for your listening pleasure. Thanks to the generous support of our patrons, we are bringing you another amazing action-packed one-shot. You can find us over at patreon.com slash nwtbpodcast, where for the price of a pamphlet adventure every month you can help us develop more premium mothership podcasts and YouTube content. Now, on to the adventure. As soon as I saw the cover for this adventure, I knew I had to play it. As someone who has holidayed in China before and have kept pet rats, I knew it would be right up my alley. John is squirming. <laughs> I don't know you kept pet rats. Well, not now, but I used to. You can keep them as pets. Yeah, I know. Yeah, good. I just didn't know this about you. Oh, you're learning new something new every day. I'll be honest, it doesn't surprise me. Really? If you told me, John, I hate rats, I would never keep a rat as a pet. Actually, no, it's hard to predict because <laughs> you are like a germaphobe. Yeah. But you're not irrational. They're, very, they're quite clean animals. Yeah, that's what they always say. It's mice that aren't clean. Yeah, because mice have no bladders. So they, <laughs> they involuntarily... Ur- this is true. Fun fact, audience. Wow. Mice have no bladders, so they can't hold anything in. So they involuntarily urinate all over their feet, which is why they can climb walls, because their feet are sticky from being covered in urine. <laughs> well, glad we found that out. That's terrifying. But I am speaking, of course, of the module called Year of the Rat by Owen O'Donnell a two-page dungeon for the first edition Mothership Sci-Fi Horror RPG featuring art by Lettuce. That's just their name they used. You can... (laughs) (laughs) You fucking lost it there, didn't you? (laughs) You can download the digital version from Owen's Itch store or order physical copies from the Tuesday Night Games store. The links will be in the description below. I am Andrew, and I will be your warden for this evening. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Wait a minute. Andrew, A-N-D-R-E-W, warden, W-A-R-D-E-N. <laughs> they have the same letters. They have the same letters. Holy shit, Andrew. Andrew. They, they do. It's an anagram it, for It is an actually anagram of warden. I was born for this. Joining me at the table, uh, my three amazing players. John, you can go first since you have already butted into my intro. Hi. I like playing Mothership. <laughs> it's a good game. Do you want to give them your actual voice so they won't be confused? Hi, I'm John. Uh, I don't like playing Mothership. It's a terrible game. <laughs> <laughs> there goes that sponsorship. Doug. Hi. No, we are not sponsored. Yes. Doug, hello. Hello, hi. Would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners? Do you know John is also an anagram for Honj? <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. There you go. No. So you whatever my that. character's name was, it's now Honj. <laughs> it's now Honj. <laughs> I somehow didn't even know that because I'd always heard it backwards as Nodge, but like... <laughs> Honj. There you go. That's all I got to say. My Star Wars name. <laughs> Honj Solo. And yours is Dogu. It's God with a bit of you in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the final, but not la- the least, but not last. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me do it again. Okay, thank you very much for that, Doug. And we would like to welcome back... Josh, uh, what happened? What happened to you, Josh? Holy moly, Josh. Your voice really changed. Josh is not with us today. So we have brought in a very special guest, Samantha. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be back. Welcome back to the show. You last played in uh, Dungeons and Dragons game, Hell Comes a Glittering. That's the one. So, That's the one. Yeah. How it's did a, you enjoy it? It was great. It was awesome. Really great. And this is uh, very, very different. So I'm excited to jump into it. Excellent. This will be your first time playing Mothership. Yep. Will it not? Yep. Very first time. There's a first time for everything. There is. Well, I have just one thing to tell you. Welcome to Mothership, the sci-fi horror RPG where you and your crew try to survive in the most inhospitable environment in the universe, outer space. You'll excavate dangerous derelict spacecraft, explore strange unknown worlds, encounter hostile alien life, and examine the horrors encroaching upon your every move. Are you ready? I was born ready. Excellent. Because as we all know, 
Much like how Andrew is an anagram of warden, Samantha is an anagram of player. <laughs> <laughs> if you added, like, a P. You were born to be a warden. Or an L. Yes. If you changed several of the letters or and reduced the number, Samantha is an anagram of player. <laughs> As, okay, yeah. They both have the letter A in it. I'll give you that one. Yeah. It's basically the same thing then. Right? Yes. Yep. Okay. We have all rolled up multiple characters beforehand. Hopefully you only need one of them. But it's good to be prepared, isn't it, John? Yeah, absolutely. In this game, it is. It is. You don't be caught unprepared. I have had to use a spare character once so far. Yes. We do quite well on Mothership, but it's a bit of a grinder. See, I patiently wait until the end of the game to die. Yeah, except for that one time. Well, a uh, playthrough of Moonbase Blues will be completed by now. Check yeah. it out on YouTube and our podcast. But yes, you, we did lose some characters. It was more like a traditional Mothership adventure, wasn't it? Yes, yes, yes it was. Yes. Well, I don't know about everyone else, but I can't wait to meet your characters. Shall we get started? Everyone? Yes. Yes. Hi. Good. Then let us begin Year of the Rat, episode one. scene fades into an office conference room. Neat, light grey walls, sterile. The room is furnished with a long 12-seater black metal table in the centre of the room and potted ferns in each corner. At one side of the table is a man of similar furnishings. Neat black hair, bright white shirt and tie, The only colour on him is a small blue and gold corporate logo. He looks down at a stack of paper on the table, then looks up at three people seated at the other side. Greetings and salutations! My name is Julian Smithers, and I am an appraiser and fraud protection officer for Fly Safe Insurance. Space is dangerous! Fly safe! The company has authorized me to procure the services of skilled contractors to assist with an investigation of a claim. Thank you all for being available at such short notice. I have all your details here, but perhaps you would like to introduce yourselves. He looks to the first character sitting across from him at the table. John, who is this character? What do they look like? Sitting across from him is a far cry from the rest of the room. The rest of the room is this kind of really shiny, sanitized corporate environment. This guy's a bit of a vermin. He's kind of... His hair is a wild, spiked mess. It's bleached white with black roots. He's, a, uh, he's an Asian man, and he's wearing little round black spectacles, like John Lennon spectacles. And uh, he's smoking... Like a electric cigarette thing. And uh, he says, Well, I'm, I'm Im Desu. And I'm going to be honest with you. The only reason I came by is because I wanted to piss off someone else that wanted my services more today. This seems like a simple thing. <clears throat> Sorry. You know, if you, uh, if you lined up those two ferns the right way, the, the electrical wavelengths would actually cause a cascade, put the right kind of charge through it. It's almost beautiful. There's a curious expression on the person sitting next to Im. And that person is who, Doug? What do they look like? Who are they? Yeah, my name's Chester E. Maxwell. Everyone calls me Mouse. Uh, My mum always told me to dress up nicely, so I'm wearing a uh, unironed formal shirt with a tie that is very clearly not tied properly and a nice blazer. With a with a wood kind of stitched into it that my mum stitched into for me, bless her. 
Uh, he's also got a little bum bag with some, some goodies in there, including his mum, which he carries around <laughs> with him everywhere, apparently. Um, Chester is, uh, or Mouse is a, a short fella. Um, he's uh, kind of looks a little bit like Harry Melling, but with blonde hair and like five foot four. Very young, very impressionable. Yeah. The man stares back at this person and then turns his head to the last person sitting at the table. Sam, who is this character and what do they look like? Buck Fernand. Looks a little bit slightly too tanned to be normal and teeth a little bit too whitened to also be natural. It's kind of awkward to look at sometimes, but he's very well kept. His hair's like, there doesn't seem to be a hair out of place. He's dressed for the job that he wants to have and not necessarily the job that he has. So he's got a leather pilot's jacket on. There's a patch stitched into it that says improve, adapt and overcome. He looks very serious, like he's very involved in what the man who's describing what's happening is speaking to them all. He's very invested in what he's saying. He looks like he's paying very close attention. The man clears his throat. Now, the mission is simple. I won't bore you with too much of the details. He flips through a few stacks of paper. The casino vessel designated the Year of the Rat went missing a month ago, resulting in an insurance claim, one that the company was about to settle until the vessel was found floating light years off its last known location. Your job will be to accompany me to the vessel and aid in its recovery of the black box. As payment, you will be granted salvage rights over the contents of the vessel. Here is a blueprint of the Year of the Rat. You may prepare how you see fit. I will be in the shuttle in Docking Bay 3 at 0800 tomorrow, awaiting our departure. I will see you then. Any questions? So, like, was it a station, brother, or a, a ship? It's a vessel, a casino vessel. That's don't quite answer my question there, bub. Yes, it's a spaceship. Ah, good. Flies in outer space. Yeah. That's how they get lost. But one of them old luxury liners back in the day. They gotta move through sp- I don't know if you know this, you gotta move through space to get lost. Yeah. I mean, technically all the space is moving, but... Well, that's why I was a bit confused. Do you like, have any questions? I've got work to do. How the fuck do you lose an entire station? So I was a bit lost at... So you're coming with us? Yes, I will be facilitating the transfer and the finding of the black box. Oh, that'll be fun. You, of course, have salvage rights on anything you find. All that the company's interested in is the recovery of the black box. Okay, best goes to the quickest. I will see you tomorrow. And he walks out the door. Is this the first time the three of you have met? Or do you think you've part of a team? What do you think? I feel like this is, we've met for the first time. I feel yeah. like it's more of a, we've just met each other. It feels like the company, Flysafe, has put out a contract for the cheapest, yeah. most bottom of the rung nobodies to come and do this job. I'm wearing it. I'm not even wearing anything corporate. I'm wearing like a black t-shirt with lots of holes in it. <laughs> and the t-shirt says risk of electricity on it. Like, a, <laughs> like with a, a warning sign. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just smoking this electric cigarette thing. What class are they in? Im is a scientist. Uh, he's an engineer. He's a he's a prodigy. So he's not formally qualified, but he's so he doesn't come too cheap because he's got a genius engineering mind. So I've got jury rigging, and mechanical repair and engineering. Nice. He's basically sci-fi Elon Musk. <laughs> well, he's he's not an entrepreneur. He's he's a bit more hands-on. You know yeah. Michael Reeves from yeah. YouTube. He's, he's a bit like that guy. He's kind of a slightly unhinged engineering machinist <laughs> putting putting like tasers on the floor type stuff yeah yeah he likes electricity yeah doug what is your character mouse he is a teamster so bits and bobs he used to do odd jobs for uh unsavory people you might say he's a young man correct very young man yes young and impressionable you did say very young very impressionable yes very good and he's uh his mother always told him to clean his act up and, and get an official job so he he went on Space Seek. <laughs> your first space job. Seek. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, he picked up a job from some insurance company. He doesn't know what that means, but... Uh, on Space Seek, you have to apply for 50 jobs a day. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so, you won't get your Space Seeker payment. Yeah. 
he doesn't exactly know what uh, what the hell he's going to do with salvage. <laughs> yeah. He was expecting to get paid. Well, it's just a recovery mission, and you're... It's a casino vessel. What do you think is laying around in a casino vessel? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Lastly, we have Buck. I think uh, Buck is... He's just kind of got into the business, and he's ready to climb his way to the top. He's really driven, perhaps awkwardly so. So I think he's sort of just ready to smash any goal that is given to him, and, and this is his first job, and he's ready to rock it in his terms. What is his speciality? He's a teamster. Teamster? So um, he's a, a bit of a spiritual goal-oriented person. I've described him a couple of times as Space Tony Robbins. <laughs> so, you know, he's, uh, he's ready to make a good impression on his teammates, hopefully um, drag them up with him. Excellent. My character's just, like, not fully here. <laughs> <laughs> we fast forward to the next day. You are on a space station orbiting close to where this vessel disappeared and you gather together the next day, 8 o'clock sharp in the morning, and Julian Smithers is standing outside of the shuttle, ready to depart. Hello! I take it you are prepared to the mission. Please, come on board. Buck shakes his hand as he walks in firmly. Returns the shake. eye contact. <laughs> Good, oh, that's one contact. of the... <laughs> yeah. I'm going to squint at him, and I'm thinking, like, is this guy an android? Why is he so weird? <laughs> it's just very corporate. <clears throat> I'm just going to suck on my east, like my electric cigarette and it's going to... You board the small shuttle. Blow it shuttle. in his face and walk in. <laughs> you all got plain clothing on. You've got uh, duffel bags holding your equipment. Yeah. And you step on board. Mine's just in a, in a bum bag around his waist. <laughs> Mine's in a backpack. Yeah. All right. You board the ship. And time fades out. You make the trip, a few weeks go by, and cry asleep. One week before you come out, a few days before, to acclimate yourself back again. And up on the view screen comes into view a vessel. A vessel that looks like some sort of long silver zeppelin with red and gold paint all around with glowing lights. It is like a beacon. Well, there it is, the year of the rat. So the power is still on? Seems to be so. And you do a scan of the ship, and you see three points of entry. There is a main entryway on the east side of the vessel for new arrivals and guests. There is a staff airlock towards the northwest part of the ship and lastly to the southwest part of the ship is the maintenance airlock you have three points of entry what do you do so we've been shown the map of the ship you have so and i'm allowed it, to open my little ipad and it comes up on the screen you bring out your little display and you bring up the schematic of the ship you have a choice of where to dock near yeah, the bridge be a good start even the staff entry might be a good option. Yeah. You can try hailing. Yeah. I will open up a hailing frequency. Doot. Hello. This is Julian Smithers of the FlySafe Corporation. We are here to investigate an insurance claim. Please hand over your black box to us. And everything else. <laughs> In the background. Sons of bitches. <laughs> well, that's an easy job done. <laughs> Or not. No response. Right. Uh, should we start at the bridge and work our way down? I mean, if I was a black box, that's where I'd be, right? Okay, so either something terrible happened or they have incompetent mechanics that don't know how to fix the comms. Wait, are there people on this ship? Is there not? What else are we hailing? It went missing with a full complement of crew and guests. Right, right. How many people, roughly? I don't know. I wasn't given that information. Well, one fucking job there, but. Usually about 50 to 70 guests. Right. And about 15 to 20 crew. Well, there better not be a lot of dead people on this ship, or I'm going to be rightly upset. 
Well, let's just go in with a positive mindset here, guys. You know, it could be anything. Let's let's not get too concerned. Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to go in with the M. Desu mindset because it's the only one I can do. I don't know if it's the same for you. Should we should we go through the like the main door then, or like the staff door? Or? I think the staff entrance is best. It's probably less convoluted. If it's one of these kind of ships, I think they're designed to, you know, confuse the guests or casino, keep them get them lost. I think the staff's more uh, to the point. Yeah, right. And your ship moves in and begins the docking procedure to the staff entrance at the northwest portion of the ship. The airlock extends, goes through the decompression, and you all enter. What do you carry with you? What What are you wearing? In my backpack, I have a vac suit, a foam gun. Are you wearing your vac suit? No, not wearing it, no. Are you carrying it with you? Yeah, it's in my backpack. It's a okay. big lumpy backpack. All right. It's got, got a foam gun in there, some radiation pills, a first aid kit, and a foldable stretcher. Are you all else similarly equipped? I got told it was a yeah, a casino, so I'm still wearing my dishevelled formal wear okay. of not tied properly tie, on iron shirt and uh, blazer with a, with a hood stitched into it. So, plus I got a crowbar stitched into it as well, so I can just pull that out because uh, that's a proper weapon for a proper man. And Buck, what is he carrying? So he's carrying quite a number of things actually. He's got his rigging gun. He also has a vac suit, although he's not wearing it at the moment. A shovel and a salvage drone. Wow. Are you bringing it out? Are you preparing to use it imminently? Mm. Or is it packed away in a little case? I think it's probably packed away in the case at this point. And behind you, you have Julian Smithers. Mr. Smithers, we should call him. Oh, yeah, I got a bum bag full of full of drugs and beer as well. Don't and your that. mother's ashes. And your mother's <laughs> ashes. <laughs> Hopefully none of those drugs are a grey powder type variety. <laughs> <laughs> so that would get awkward, wouldn't it? As you enter, you had to match the cylindrical motion of the Zeppelin. It's sort of spinning in space. And your readout showed system power was nominal, but switched to emergency power. Mm. And artificial gravity is still functioning. And you see into the window of the staff hallway. It goes down a hallway a few metres... And at the end of the hallway, you can just see to the north is helm and to the south is crew quarters and kitchen. Right, if I was a black box, right, don't they, uh, don't they normally hang around in the, in the, up the top there where all the important people stand? The yeah. black box will be situated in the helm of the ship. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Right, so that's our first Well, first of all, does the readout say that we have air? We got gravity. There is air. Inside. Okay, good. If we're inside the ship, I'm going to take my shoes off and like bounce around on the carpet for a bit because I like feeling the, the power in a new ship. It's kind of like a spiritual thing that I do. You open the door. Did our little, uh, our little ship, did that, is that able to give us like a, like a life reading? Like a, how many people are aboard that? No. No? Fucking useless. You enter the vessel and the airlock opens. I take my shoes off and walk on the floor with my bare feet. You are hit with a smell of death. Stale air. God, it smells like grandma's joint in here. You know how you said you didn't want to see any dead bodies? Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Uh, well. Fuck. Everything is dimly lit, but still powered. They've got little warning lights across the hallway to the entrance, splitting to the north and south. Okay, first things first, black box. Unless we want to... Unless we want to split up. Yeah, nah. That seems. What's wrong with splitting up? Did you ever watch that old uh, shitty uh, type of movies back in the day? You know, what, hundreds of years ago. Hundreds of years ago. You know those old classics, like up there with Mozart. Remember what those used to tell you? Never split up. I don't follow what you're saying, but we should head to the helm either way. I, I can agree. Buck pushes forward, Fucking cautiously, a. Sure. taking charge of the situation. Buck, you lead everyone. Just a few metres north, you see the door to the helm, and to the side of it is the door saying, Captain's Quarters. Oh, yeah. Poke my head into the Captain's Quarters? Sure. There is no window on these doors. Ah. 
Are they all kind of like airlock style doors? Yeah, so now that you're in the vessel, it's very... The staff entrance is more plain corridors. Utilitarian. Yeah, you don't have to duck, but there's like silver panelling and red paint and not really much after that. And in gold letters is the captain's quarters and the door is powered, but there's no sort of automatic. It seals after you use them. Oh, this place is super quiet. Yes, I suppose it's all made of steel or metal so that not much sound would travel through the doors or anything. So, the... No, you would know each door would be have the capacity to seal. Mm. Okay, I guess we go through to the uh, the helm. Sure. Right, right. I got dibs on, on Captain's room too, by the by. When we, when Wait we... a minute, we didn't agree to that. Well, you've got to what, be quick. What Hence do you mean dibs? dibs? Salvage rights. I want to put my shoes back on. <laughs> Mouse, would you like to go... All right, I, t- I, I call dibs on the rest of the ship then, asshole. That's not how it works. <laughs> no, you got to do it room by room. The door to the helm opens. All right, the goddamn vault. There's a vault, I got it. <laughs> there is a vault. Except no, that's not how it works, okay? We, we, we play this fair. All right. You sort out the salvage between all of you. I'm just here for the black box. And Julian comes in to the helm as well. I'll, I'll, I'll guess I'll go into the Are helm. Are you following? Yeah. Okay, Mouse, you've, you're all in the helm, and you walk in to a large, wide space with control panels all at the top of the ship, and this one does have the full window, and you can see space just rotating slowly through the screen. You see all the system controls. They look like to be smashed and broken. There's bits of wire pulled out, there's liquid on the floor like lubricant and oil and there's a nest of wires spread out all above the only thing you do notice is that there's a a lock a vault lock I'm that's look- still blinking yeah. I'm looking up at the wires and I'm like oh baby what do they do to you I take off my black spectacles and I squint at them and I'm going to try and see if there's a purpose to this before you do that I'm a- I did bury the lead oh. because in the corner of the room is a person laying down blood all over the floor. You right there, Gov? No response. Oh, that's not good. Well, I've got a medical kit in my bag, so I presume I'm qualified to go over there and see how long they've been dead, if they are dead. Im, you walk over to the dead person and you see... I crouch over the body. And you are met with a rather decomposed guard male so the smell's really bad smells really bad I cover my and nose with my arm they've got bite marks all over the body uh, what what size of bite marks tiny like some sort of animal if you were to guess something like a small rodent well looks like you got Okay, nice well, problem. Well, yeah, no, you, you can't see it from that far away. So I'm going to stand up. I'm going to walk backwards. And I'm going to say, So wait a minute, this ship was called the Year of the Rat, right? That is correct. Their mascot was some kind of giant rat-like alien. I'm uh, sorry? Yes, I may have mentioned that before. No, I think you buried the lead on that one there too, mate. Yes, they had a giant rat-like space creature. So they had an exotic animal yes. living in the ship. They did. Quite valuable. Okay, so it's obviously had some babies and they've killed this guy. That's not covered under the policy. Hey, Ib, yeah, remember how you said you called uh, dibs on any vaults around here? And I'll just point to that. Blinking vault lock 2 is blinking. There you go. While this is happening, Buck's just going to head over to the controls and sort of scan it, check out what's sure. functioning, just assess the damage. It looks to be like most of the system controls have been destroyed. There's wires pulled out, even chewed upon, it looks like. And the only functioning panel is the vault locking number two. Everything else is like fizzing and... It's about all you can get. I'm going to quickly get my foam gun out. I'm going to put my gun down and start rifling for my foam gun. And sure. I'm going to say, we should move quickly. You do notice, I'll stop you, in your investigation of the, the guard, there aren't just bite marks. There is a gunshot wound 
to their chest and they are still holding a submachine gun oh, good. with one clip on its side. I mean, uh, does anyone here know how to use a gun? Dibs on that. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I pick up the submachine gun and the clip. Okay. I've got firearms, by the by. This is bad medicine. I don't know how long we should be here. Buck, just as you're going through the panels... I don't want to look for the salvage until we blow out the airlocks or something. You look around the panels, Buck, and you hear some kind of noise. Does it sound like it's coming from within the controls? Yes. Okay, but I'm going to back away. It sounds like it's coming very fast. I'm going to quickly back away. You step away just in time for a swarm of rat-like creatures to burst out of the casing and begin to swarm towards you. Everyone roll speed checks as a swarm of rat-like, tiny rat-like creatures with multiple eyes and sort of leathery skin just come pouring out of this panel. Buck, what did you get? 49 over 34. That is a fail. Please take one stress. You will be acting last in the initiative. Getting stressy. It is getting stressy. Moving on to Mouse. 83 on 48. You also fail. Lastly, no, next we have Im. 76 over 34. You have all been surprised by this swarm of rats. I will roll for Julian. 33, critical failure. Julian will not act this round. Since you have all failed, the swarm of rats have got the best of you, Buck. It attacks. And they begin swarming all over you, climbing up your legs, going into your suit, going into your clothing, and starts biting you. I'm just going to start punching into my own body as much as I can while backing up. Sure, you can do that. But before that happens, you take two points of damage. Are you wearing your clothing? That is one armor point? Yes. Your clothing gets torn to shreds as they're coming into and biting your legs. And you will take one point of damage. Okay. And that is its turn. It just starts swarming all over Buck. Now... You can go. The players who have failed can go. Choose who goes first. I've got a gun. Uh, probably well, not the best thing. Me, my God. <laughs> right They're sort of surrounding Buck. It makes sense for Buck to go first, I think. Buck, you wanted to push them off? Yeah, I'm just going to... Go for it. You know, it's like when the ants are all over you and you kind of just slap them and try to get them off, but I'm doing that a bit more vigorously while I'm moving So what backwards. sort of skill would you want to use for that? What sort of stat are you using? Speed to do it quickly? Strength to just tear them off? Intellect or... How do you want to do it? I'm trying to do it as quickly as possible because they're they're swarming, right? So mm. I'm just trying to be speedy about it to take, you know, so they don't bite me so much. Do you have any skills you can add to that, do you think? I don't think so. No? Would you so. like to call for help for one of your teammates? They can assist you, giving you advantage. Yes, most definitely. I'm going to call out and say, they're crawling all over me here. Mouse is the closest one for you. Mouse, do you want to come and help yeah, him? I'm just going to pull out my crowbar and just start whacking and going to town on on rats. Well, probably better hand. Use your oh, hands. Yeah, no, pull. they're all crawling all over. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just going to start just ripping them off. And, and All right, Buck, you may roll with advantage your speed checks. You are being assisted by Mouse. So give us a speed check, please. When you say with advantage... Yes, you may roll twice and take the, the lower, lower result. Okay. Let me do Doug that is first. handing some dice over. All right. So that's an... First one's a 91. That'll be a fail. And the advantage? The 56. Which is over. also... Oh, yeah. It's a fail. What is your speed? My speed is 34. Okay. So that is a fail. Please take another stress. And you can move, but you're still covered in rats. I'm definitely moving. Okay. You I feel like I'd be involuntary at this point. Sure, you can just start running around the room trying to shake these things off. Mouse, you are trying to help Buck. Im, would you like to assist somehow? Hopefully not shooting it with a submachine gun. For fuck's sake. I mean, we're here with a salvage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the less people there are, the more he should oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing that, are we? He ponders his move, whether he wants to double cross his Is my teammates. character that much of a monster? That's a bit of a... a, bit of a Probably not. Okay. 
there's wires everywhere. There are wires and chewed on the panels and everything. I have a master skill of engineering. Yes, and how are you going to use this to get rats off your friend, your teammate? There might be a level of electrical current that would kill the rats because they're small, but not kill you. Alrighty. Alrighty. If I grab the I like right it. wire and stick one of the... and Like, it passes through them. Alright, you're going to try to grab a live wire and try to shock them off. Yeah. Go for it. Let's go intellect. Intellect plus 20 for my master skill. Go for it. This is a rather ingenious bit of engineering. So that's a... Uh, I have to roll under 68. Do you tell Buck to come back to the panels? I'm just going to say... Everyone stay clear! Oh, yeah. You, well, no. I, I want to talk to you because you're too much of a, in a, too much of a panic to probably... Not panicking yet, just, you know, okay. a bit perturbed, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming. Right. Get to the panels! Buck's going to do his best to sort of, like, head over there while... Yeah, covered in rats? Yeah, that's it, yeah. Go for it. Now hold still! That's a fail. Okay, <laughs> please take a stress. What was the fail? Uh, that was a 97. Oh my god. <laughs> above 68. Lastly is Mr. Julian Smithers. I don't like rats at all, but I'll try to help. And he just runs over and just starts slapping them off, try to slap <laughs> them off you with a basic... So I'm just looking for a wire and none of them are sufficient. Yeah, I'm none of no one. charge. Yeah. Julian tries a speed check just to try to rip them off. Success with a 30 under 32. And he just starts shoving the rats onto the floor and they start scattering. They form a less cohesive swarm but then they start to reform once more and we are into round two. And they go to attack the next closest person, which is all of you are now around this paneling and I will roll a d4. One is Im, two is Buck, three is Julian, and four is Mouse. Buck, number two. <laughs> the rats reconvene on you and bite you once again. Can I try and, as they're coming up, can I try and stomp on them? Like, just to minimise the amount that are actually crawling on me. Is that possible? It is their turn now. Okay, yep, that makes sense. But after this, you can probably find cover or some way to cover. Yep. But unfortunately, it is their turn. They will get to do one thing, which is a bite. Yep, sounds about right. Four damage straight into your health this time. They're drawing blood. They're sort of scrambling, getting feverish. They're going... Wee, 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 wee. Disgusting creatures. They've got multiple eyes just spinning on their heads. Disgusting, leathery creatures. And it is their turn. They have swarmed you again. They've tasted blood. Who wants to go first? It's getting quite frantic now. He's bleeding. I, I, it's a, a bit of a stupid idea, but I, I've got... <laughs> Come on, Doug. There's no time. A split second. What do you do? Who I, acts? I'm going to, in my, in my frantic state, pull out a beer... <laughs> and just um, pull out a beer and just spray and just them. Start, yeah, essentially. All right. I want. I want to see if they get drunk. <laughs> if <I> just, <laughs> they have to ingest it. Well, they're just going to get wet. I mean, it's, but it's, I'll give you this: it will make them easy to. I'll give them disadvantage on their next attack if they're all wet. Yeah. But disadvantage on you try to remove them. But I mean, beer is wheat. It's bay. It's yeast. So what are you asking? Are you trying to give them a yeast infection? I don't no, know. I mean, where they, would, going they would probably be going to stop stop everything and drink at the beer instead of fresh blood. Probably. I don't know. Well, it's a it's a. It's, <laughs> this I, is I'm ridiculous. Thinking of ideas. I'll tell you. I'll tell you as a player that you're panicking, are you? Well, <laughs> no, not literally. Not, not literally. literally. Okay, figurative pain. Figuratively panicking. Is this what you want to do, Mouse? You pull out a beer bottle and you begin spraying Buck with beer. Buck, what do you what do you say to this nonsense? That's extremely unhelpful. <laughs> <laughs> it's either that or I just start pulling him off. Uh, that sounds like the better idea. You, well, too late. You're now covered yeah. in beer <laughs> yeah. and the rats it did something. They're sort of not latching on as well. Who goes next? Buck. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to move away, take some cover somewhere. There is no cover. They are swarming you. They move with you. They're okay. covering you. My instinct is to stop, drop, and roll, but I feel like that's going to make it even worse. Do it. It'll be a slippery <laughs> rat wrestling <laughs> situation. All right. I'm doing it. I'm right. dropping. I want to drop hard, though, to try and injure as many as possible on the on the fall. Sure. 
You can roll speed or combat. Okay, I reckon I'm going to do this combat. Can I do it like WWE style? Yeah. Like I'm dropping a people's elbow sure. into the ground? Okay. That's 63 over 37. Oh, no, that's another stress. And your turn is done. Im and Julian are next. Im, what do you do? <sighs> it's just a bunch of rats. I didn't expect it to be overtaken. Yeah. Four people from a swarm of rat-like creatures. I've got a foam gun. Okay, but that will also solidify Buck, but it will stop the biting, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, we can peel it off. Okay. Presumably. <laughs> Buck. I rifle for my foam gun. It's better, it's better than peel. I've got three, I think I've got three charges. Okay. So I squirt you with the foam gun. This will stop all attacks and immobilize both of you. The rats and Buck. But that's a combat, so I could just miss and waste the charge. You, yes. Now you're playing the game. That's a 35 over 28. <laughs> Please take another stress as you fumble once more. This is the Julian runs up and just tries to now slap them off with another speed check. Another success. You are now rat free, Buck, and it is their turn. I will roll another d4 to determine who it, they swarm onto next. Julian's killing it. I have rolled a three, which was, play the tape, Julian. I believe. Because Mouse was number four. Yes. Yes. Julian is now covered in rats. Oh, Jesus, I'm now covered in rats. <laughs> <laughs> what is this character you're playing? <laughs> and they are bitten. Four. Disadvantage, though, because they're covered in beer. I did say that. Yeah. They don't get disadvantage. I should have reiterated that. Because they're a swarm of, like, dozens and dozens of rats, they're just automatically hitting. But I will do half damage because you mentioned that. They're slippery. Yeah. So we'll do half damage. Thankfully, because it was a five. So let's go two points of damage. You see Julian's clothes get ripped as well. And now the one point of armor they offered is now no longer viable. And they lose some health. Get these things off me! And now it is all your turns. Julian will act first and try to just bat them off with a speed check. Failure! They take a stress. Get these things off me, I said. <laughs> Oi, Im, give me that foam gun. <laughs> you going to change weapons? I'm not giving you the foam gun. It's only got two charges left. Yeah, but I can shoot. Come on, people. It's just rats. Give me the damn gun. Do something. This is a nightmare. I'm just, just going to go in and try to pull them off. Do it. That's another combat. Yes. Or can I make it a strength? Whatever you like, I'll John. make it a strength. Strength. You're punching them off. Yeet. That's 45 over 34. You fail again. Please take another stress. Who is next on this madness train? Buck's going to pull out his shovel and say, I'm sorry about <laughs> this. <laughs> Roll a combat. This is the only option. She ponders. Six? Flat. Yeah, so six. You hit. <laughs> Roll 1d10 damage. That's eight. Eight points of damage. You squash a whole bunch of rats and they go scurrying. There are only a few left, but they are still on. Julian. Uh, fuck Watch it. where you're swinging that. I'm sorry. And then, yeah. <laughs> How Mouse. Many, so it looks like they took out a good chunk of Oh, yeah. There's only a few left, but they're still latching onto his legs and chomping into it. Well, I promise I'm not aiming for your kneecaps, but... Uh, and I'm just going to crowbar them. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so if you miss critically, you're going to hit this guy. <laughs> Shit. Three. Three flat. Three. You hit. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. Do your damage. What is it? A D10? A D10 as well. One. <laughs> are you kidding me? No. There are still a couple of rats remaining as it had two hit points left, which goes down to one. Fuck. Who is left I'm to do something? I'm going to try and grab him. Go for it. There's only a few left. 69 over 34. Nice. nice. Please take another stress. And it is the rat's turn again. We've got one more this bite. This is fucking stupid. <laughs> on, did anyone take them off, Julian? No, no, no one could. still there, so it's going to bite. But the bite will be less damage now. Let's just say one point of damage. One because it's got one... <laughs> Okay, one point of damage onto Julian. Ow, it's in my... <laughs> <laughs> it's up Not to my that. sack! 
And now, who wants to go first? I'm swinging again. Swing again. Oh, no, oh. No, no. Wait, wait. <laughs> you two are just wailing it's on the only thing that's on working. shovels and crowbars. Let us. me try first. I was just tries gonna... combating it. 23 is a failure. <laughs> I, can I just pick it up and yeet it? Okay. But you have to be successful in grabbing it. Let's see what you can do. What, are, what am I rolling? Whatever you like. Strength or combat. The same, same. No. Is Critical failure. Critical failure. <laughs> <laughs> you get I one grab, of them, I grab one of them, a handful of nut. One of them jumps on you. That's oh. critical failure. <laughs> you go... I punch him in the dick. You end up punching him in the crotch. <laughs> and <laughs> if he's too scared to react, because he doesn't really understand what's happening... But please roll, please roll a d20 to panic. Oh, me? Yes. Gosh. Would you like to use your teamster ability to roll with advantage here? Dad? There must oh, be more no. serious issues coming up. <laughs> I, 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 with a three, I think I'll be fine. All right. You got three stress. Yeah, that's a 20. You've only failed one. This is my second failure. So it's you a four. You should be on four. But it's a 20, so okay. I Okay, you do not panic, but please take a stress for the panic for the failed roll. All right. Im or Buck or Julian. Im or Buck can go next. What do they do? I just try. I'm just trying again. Just try and pull them. You keep, keep trying to punch them off. Welcome to Mothership. <laughs> the sci fi horror RPG where you will be attacked Finally. by rats. Hey. 23 under 34. Got it. Please do your damage. It's a D10. It's a D10, and I'll tell you right now minimum damage will kill this final rat hanging on for dear life. Two. And you smash it. I just. Just. I just Avoiding. squeeze it in my hands. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah, and I like I shake my hand off. And combat finishes. Buck was getting ready to swing that shovel again. <laughs> <laughs> no! Stay back! <laughs> Not again! And around you are just bodies and bodies and bodies of small, leathery... It's not quite a rat. It's something more, something different. It's got multiple eyes all around its head. It's got very sharp teeth and claws and leathery sort of skin, like a hairless rat. And they're everywhere. What do you do? First, I'm going to pull my first aid kit out of my bag and see to poor Julian, who's covered in... Well, you've both been bitten, actually, haven't you? Julian sticks out his hand and goes, No, stay back, I'm quite fine. You've done more than enough trouble. Ins and he walks away. Intelligence, he, he, he must be an android. Why? Because <laughs> he's behaving <laughs> strangely. Intelli There's intellect. no insight in this game, John. What okay, do you okay. think? Intellect check. Just a normal intellect check. You don't need to roll intellect checks. John, what does your cat... Do you... Does Im think J... Yes, Julian, I think you're an android. <laughs> then you think they're an android. Uh, Mr. Smithers, sir, I, I, I just want to take this moment to uh, apologize for punching you in the dick. <laughs> I thought you would handle this situation better, but I agree... That maybe we should spend more on qualified personnel. Just find the black box. I'm and he storms yeah. off into the corner. I'm kicking rats out of the way, getting yeah. to my bag that was dropped on the floor, peeling rats off of it, yeah. rifling inside, getting my first aid kit, and then I'm going to go over and deal with your bites. Well, Buck. play in character. That can't be good to be bitten by one of those things. Let me just disinfect these for you. Thank you, I appreciate that. But look... I don't necessarily see this as a failure. There is no such thing as failure. There are only results. <laughs> We've got some data to work on now. So I've, I think this was overall a win. And out Shh. of the crevice that you saw the rats come from is a little metal sign saying black box and an empty case. Ah, oh, for fuck. Who the fuck takes a black box is there damage like it's been does it look like it's just been taken out or is there damage around it like it's there's bits of wires ripped out definitely it looks like it's been forcibly removed okay here's my theory some dumbass whichever one caused this alien swarm problem ripped out the black box because they didn't want anyone to know that it was their fault someone on the crew one of the staff maybe whatever dealer brought in the giant rat thing Right, if I was if I was an asshole, where would I take a black box? Or if I was a rat, where would I take a bright <laughs> orange looking You are fruit? almost a rat, mouse. Yeah, look. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, it is big and orange and it smells funny. 
What's this? A black box. What? Orange. Oh, yeah, it is orange. Yes. Yes. So, like, it could have been some asshole, or the rats could have just thought it was a weird fruit. Do the what? The wires don't look chewed, do they? They're like, it's not, it looks like it's been forcibly torn out. They do look like a lot of the wires are chewed, so you're not even sure what was chewed and what was ripped out. Yeah. It's very hard to tell. But how a black box sits, like, it would be clipped in or something, right? It's not just floating around in nothing, yeah. so... Whatever's been Somebody holding it has... Rem- it'd have to be removed with something that has, like, dexterous hands to some extent, surely. Well, there's There's a significant number of chewing everywhere, yeah, okay. so... It's been weakened somehow. It could be have been chewed. What if there's rat people? Well, yeah, the, the thing that worries me is that these are tiny ones, and we know there was at least one big one somewhere here. Buck's putting on his vac suit now. All right, just, excellent. Because his clothes right. are absolutely destroyed by yeah. the rats. And we, do, do you have a vac suit? I've just got what my mum made me. Because I've got a vac suit. You've got a vac suit. Mm-hmm. We could try to find a way to depressurize the vessel. Well, okay, guess I'll go fuck myself. Well, no, I'm saying you guys could go back <laughs> to the ship. We can try to find a way to depressurize the vessel. Might kill anything inside. And they can hog all the loot. Yeah. <laughs> you hear a voice inside your head. What that crazy voice in my head said. I don't want to deal with any more of these things. My only concern with that is we could lose the black box in that process. Your only mission is to get the black box. I don't care if you squabble over your riches. We need to find it. We're not going to be able to find it if there's going to be a million things biting us all the way. That's your job. I mean, at the the same time, that'd be depressurize or just vent the air out of the ship. There's also the possibility that people are, might actually be alive on board. And also, how are you going to depressurize the ship when all the controls are fried? Well, I can try and fix them. Or we could just... You look at it and it just, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it would take weeks I've worked with of worse. overhaul. Weeks of spare parts. I but mean, you, there is spare parts in the ship. I mean, plan B is we just blow a great big fucking hole in the side of it. Oh, God. With what? Call it a week. We didn't come here on a combat vessel. True. What, what are you going to use? You haven't got any explosives. Plan C. <laughs> Ram raiding. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I am not authorized to destroy another ship. Look, you just happened to lose the black box of your ship, too. This eh? isn't my ship. This is the, cli- the client's vessel. We're just trying to recoup our expenses. Right, right. All right. So plan C is off the table. Well, wait a minute. Oh. Wait, can I... Hold on a second, Mr. Smithers. I just want to talk to my, my co-workers for a second. Okay, I'll stand over here. I'm going to whisper to you quietly. I'm just going to say, there's no fucking way this was covered by the insurance. So the, so, what happens if if us knowing this is a problem? Uh, look, how much do you think a ship like this is worth? I mean, definitely more than three random chuckle fucks off the street, but still. Millions. Millions. Yeah. Tens of millions. Why the hell would they send us if they actually wanted it? This, this doesn't sit right with me at all. Well, I mean, they want a disclaim on the policy, right? They're looking for a reason not to pay out. Is that... That's right, isn't it? Yeah, but they'd be liable if they let the rat things onto the ship. Plus, how much do you think the salvage of this bird is going to cost us? Why am I Australian all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> I told you to not forget your accent, though. <laughs> you know, I'm not good at this. I've been around the street a few times, all right? These things are... Well, they're, well, they're worth a... Worth a bit. More than a couple of... Bob. Look, I think at least now we have some idea of what we might be dealing with, so... We can go in a little bit more informed. Can I... Perhaps... Hold on to... The gun... Yeah, you've got a fresh new SMG, and you see on the side there's a label which says Armour 29 SMG submachine gun. Beautiful. And it has one clip, I believe, and one clip holds five shots. All shots in the gun are spent, but there's still one clip remaining. Okay. So, Mr. Smithers... Uh, Julian. Thursday, Mr. Smithers. Re-enters the room with a fresh jumpsuit on. I'm sorry, I just had to change. D- 
do you? And he looks like he's wearing a fresh bit of clothing. You carry a lot of those on you, do you? Well, it's my company shuttle. I've got several changes of uniform. Uh, right. Uh, speaking of personal company shuttle, yeah. So, can we, uh... What did you talk about while I was gone? Have you found a plan yet? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it starts with maybe, uh, disengaging your ship, right? Because you don't want to get fucking rats onto that either. The door is closed. They cannot get through the airlock. They're rats. I'm sure the crew of this ship said the exact same thing. Surely it's got like an autopilot function on it, right? Yes, that's how it's been drifting through space. But it's gone haywire. There's no No, controls. Not our ship, your ship. What about it? (laughs) Disengage your damn ship so you don't get rats. I am not disengaging until I get the black box and complete the mission. Right, well, when we're both stuck on this fucking shit heap... Do your fucking job! <laughs> okay, okay, let's let's just all take a moment to decompress. It's I wish a, I punched him in the nuts again. It's a clearly stressful situation. Listen, you corporate cocksucker, last time I checked, our contract did not say kill fucking rats. That's not our job either. You have a risk payment which you have been offered ample compensation or salvage rights for. It is your... Problem, not mine. Yeah, yeah. I'm just putting this fact out there, right? I'm pretty sure the crew of this ship's probably thought, oh, we've got solid doors. They won't be able to get in here either. Right? So. Yeah, they gotta move through the tubes or something. As much as I like Oxygen tubes. salvaging this ship, I also don't want it to be, you know, stuck on it. So. Perhaps it would be best... So you're saying you want me to wait in the ship so you can complete your mission? I agree. Uh... Radio me when you're done. Uh... He begins to walk off. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Stop. Wait Wait a minute. Hold up. It's... It was your suggestion. Oh, I meant just disengage the ship. I'm not disengaging the ship with no one on it. Are you crazy? That's against company policy. Oh, fuck your policy. All right. Is everyone happy if Chuckle Fuck fucks off? Yeah. No. Is he useful? He hasn't got a weapon or, or armor. What if he leaves? What, what if he I'm doesn't... not going to leave. It's my job. He needs the I box. I am a professional. Right? So as long as we've got the box, we're fine. Right? So we've got that exit. But if he dies on here, it might make things a touch more complicated. So I think I think he's got the right idea in buggering off. I'm not buggering off. I'm just you just told me to wait in the ship, which I will do. Yes. Uh, all right, look, here's the here's where, how, what I think we should do. Somebody, we just need to take action. We need to commit to a plan. I can use the uh, salvage drone to scout out some locations before we head into them. That's not going to give us all of our information, but it's at least a start. There's audio and visual capabilities. You have a salvage drone? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I hold up the, the drone case. Whoa. You came prepared for this salvage party, didn't you? Well, you can never be too prepared. That looks like it. Wait a minute. Is that an Icarus? Icarus Mark III? <laughs> it looks 7 or 6 like, 7? Looks more like a Mark IV. Oh my really. god, I've looked at these online. That's beautiful. Yeah, let's just continue, right? Okay. So-, <laughs> so let's speed up this process. Are you going to use, use the drone to scout? Yes. All right. I don't want it to... I know it's got a time limit on it, right? Two hours. So I don't want it to be constantly powered up and scouting. I think, like, as we're moving around, we'll, I, I want to have it ready to go. Yeah, you just tell me room by room, yep. you can power it down. Yeah, right. perfect. Should we should we start with the most obvious answer here, right? The captain's quarters. Good. You can open the door of the captain's quarters. Julian makes his way back, and while you're standing outside the captain's quarters, you hear the airlock close, and Julian returns to the shuttle. Swear to God. You open the captain's quarters. If he strands us here, I'm going to punch him in the nuts again. All right, we'll scout. Oh, the captain's quarters is quite small. You open the captain's quarters. And, first off, dead captain. Oh. Laying in bed. Well, looks like they're breathing. Oh. Chest is slowly rising and falling. Ah. Oh. You see... Around the room, two clips worth of revolver ammunition next to a revolver as well. Captain's issue, perhaps. And dangling out of the captain's pocket clothes is a key card. Oh, useful. I'll, uh, I'll pick up the key card. You walk over to the body. 
God, this better not be full of rats. And what you thought was the rise and fall yeah. of a chest who's, of a person who's bleeding <laughs> fucking no. now erupts like a rodent pimple. I <laughs> panic <laughs> oh as God. a panic stream, spray. a panic spray of rats pour out of this captain's body and swarm you. Can I just start shooting it before they... <laughs> Please roll for speed, I'm sorry. everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> rodent pimple. <laughs> I fucking... As soon as he said he's dead, but his chest is rising and falling, I was like, ew, <laughs> no. Did, why did you go up to it then? Oh, uh, because he had the key card. <laughs> he did. And I, I can't just shoot a possibly not True. dead person. True. I'm very proud you're... Doug the player knew what was happening. All right, come on. You're going to get the initiative and you're going to squash these rats once more. Let's do it. Mouse, what did you get? 45 on 48. You you succeed and you will go first. Im. Blue streak speeds by. Too fast for the naked eye. Uh, Sonic, he's the fastest thing alive. I got 63 over, over 34. Another <laughs> fail. What's your stress, Im? Uh, my stress is at seven. I thought so. And lastly, Buck. 50 over 34. Okay, that is only Mouse will act first. You just reach for that key card and you see these rats burst out. What do you do? I, uh... You're, you, you got the gun, don't you? Grabbing, is grabbing the card going to be considered the full action? Can I grab the card and shoot? No. Generally, in this game, you can do one thing and move. That one thing could be opening a door, reloading a weapon, shooting a weapon, grabbing something. But usually, try to think of just one thing to do. I guess I'm going to step back and shoot the swarm. Go for it. With your submachine gun. You weaponed trained? Yes, firearms. Oh, nice. For 56 combat. 71. Fuck! You so spray into the bed and just go... Doo -doo 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 -doo. And it does not hit. And the rats swarm you, mouse. And attack. D4. Two damage. Yeah. Your clothes are now ripped. Are they not? Yes, one damage. And you take one damage. Madness. And that is their turn. Next up is whoever wants to go. Im or Buck. Well, I've got a foam gun. Spray him with foam. Do it. I don't want to keep wasting it on these stupid rats. <laughs> there might be something worse ahead. There's a revolver on the floor. Oh, There's a revolver on no. the floor? <laughs> <laughs> There's a swarming me, <laughs> you dick. There's no electrical things in this room? Look, if you successfully foam them, I'll let you kill them. Outright. Outright. But is there any electrical... Not in the captain's quarters. They're not even like a lamp? <laughs> not like a wall outlet? Sure, there's a lamp, but it's going to take your full action to just bash it off the wall. Next round, you'll be have exposed wires. I, I want this to work okay. so bad. You go up and bash the lamp. I do it because... Look. And these wires just dangle down. <laughs> and they are live. They are ready to go. At yeah. least when I poured beer on Buck, it did something. Listen. <laughs> I got the biggest bonus possible for this. Yeah. Buck, last in the round, it's your turn. What motivational quote do you have for Mouse this time? The path to success... Is to take massive determined action and I'm going to pull out the old faithful shovel. Yes. Yes. My massive determined action is to hit the rats with the shovel. Go for it. <laughs> Give us a combat. This is terrifying when you're the one covered in rats. It's a yeah. 42 over 37. Oh, oh no. Ow. Another stress, please. And you fail, but you do not hit Buck okay. over the head. Is no, you do not hit Mouse yeah. over the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Mouse, it is now your turn again. This is payback for punching you on the deck. Buck has shovel in hand. Im has electrocutional equipment in hand. What do you do? Do you want to give Im advantage to his shock? Do you want to present yourself? This is going to hurt. It is. This is really going to hurt. Yes, I would. All I'll right, Im. I'm not going to hit you if I get a critical failure. You it's have okay. advantage on your attack. <laughs> I have Shock advantage. these rats, please. It'll do 1d10 damage. Look, Doug, you're going to be fine. And here's why, okay? Because... It's you're a master of I have, a, I have advantage. And it's intellect, which is 48. It is. Plus uh, my master skills, which is 20. So it's 68 with advantage. So there's nothing that could possibly go wrong. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. 99. Come on. 
twice. He ponders his dice. He looks at the d20s. The d10s. It's a 37 under... Got it. 68. Do your damage. Now what's... What damage did it just be another d10? 1d10. That's 1D a d6. That's a d6. That's a d6, John. <laughs> oh. I just said that. <laughs> oh. Shit. Ah. Bye, Jen. The suspense is killing me, John. <laughs> <laughs> He's fumbling. That's popped. Oh my god. <laughs> Once more into the breach. Ten. Yay! Are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yes. You kill all the rats with an electric shock that just waves through them all. And they just go... <laughs> and fall down. And they are dead. We will see you next week. Ow. <laughs> oh, you finally got it. I did it. You did it. <laughs> it just smells like dead rat and burnt oh, hair. Oh, it smells disgusting. It smells like rotting corpse. It smells like... Just burnt, leathery rat skin. Well, this just this just goes to show you that you've got to stay committed to your decisions, oh, but up. flexible in your approach. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much for that motivational <laughs> speaking. <laughs> and on that note, we will see you next time. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, John. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you, Doug. Oh, thank you. Good. I that, feel thanked. Good. That was episode one of Nobody Wake the Bugbear Plays Year of the Rat by Owen O'Donnell, a two-page dungeon for the first edition of the Mothership Sci-Fi Horror RPG. Thank you, Owen. You can find links to Owen's Itch store in the description below and also the Tuesday Night Games store for the physical copy. The VTT map of the casino ship was adapted by me based off the original map included in the adventure. The music in this episode has been provided by our very own John. Thank you, John. John, he's composing at the moment. Yes, right now. Right now. As well as tracks by <laughs> Alex <laughs> As well as tracks by Alexander Nakarada from SerpentSoundstudios.com. Other sound effects have been sourced from freesound.org using the Creative Common license. This series was made possible by our generous Patreon supporters. <laughs> Sorry. Thank he's you. Tearing up. <laughs> yeah, I'm tearing up. <laughs> Thank you for your continued support. <laughs> if you would like... Don't touch me. Stop trying to hug me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so appreciative. If you like what you, if you like what we do and want to keep the Mothership content flowing, please consider joining at patreon.com slash nwtvpodcast. You can support us for free by checking out our socials and leaving a review or comment at nwtvpodcast and at nwtbugbear for our Twitter. Thank you for listening, and we will see you in space. Oh, bye, bye, bye now. Where no one can hear you scream. Where no one can hear the rats crawl on you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have you heard of something called science fiction? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about everyone else, but I can't wait to meet. Can't wait to meet your characters. Is it? Is it? Is it Christmas? I can't wait to meet. Wait, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wait leaving that gaff. I'm not leaving the gaff in, Doug. As John. <laughs> is it? Is it currently Christmas, or is that during the uh, podcast, the next show? No, this is releasing. Maybe December, maybe next year. I have no idea. Well, that would explain why Doug looks so grumpy. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, let me do it again. He's dressed a bit for the job that... Yeet. For the audience. For the audience. <laughs> a red Chinese lantern just plummeted from the <laughs> ceiling and tumbled across the table like a, Western, uh, like a Wild West tumbleweed. <laughs>
<laughs> Those rendered, were very, very cool. Rendered us all temporarily speechless. They were very cool. I, I highly appreciated them. They felt very fitting. Sam, I do apologize for that technical mishap. Would you like to continue? That's all right. They're all female. Yeah. We just bred them with the DNA of frogs. <laughs> DNA of frogs, yeah. <laughs> Someone dun, said dun, that like, there's dun, a hint dun, 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 in that movie when Sam kneels in the helicopter and he can't put a seatbelt together because he's holding two like female parts of the seatbelt so it can't, mm. they can't click. Yeah. And then he just ties them yeah. together like that so yeah. that he can sit down. It's like Foreshadowing. Li- life finds a way. Life uh, finds a way. I'll tell you the problem with this place. Um, with the achievement here. It didn't take any uh, discipline to attain it. You know, you, you, you looked at what other great men had done and you took the next step. You didn't do any, you didn't do something for yourselves, so you didn't have responsibility. And before you uh, even knew what you had, you uh, uh, patented it, and you uh, packaged it, and you slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and you, you're selling it. You're going to sell it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Im's giving, like, the Joker mixed with Elon Musk. It's yeah. the vibe I'm getting. <clears throat> All right. Can we resume, Doug? 